Hi, welcome at my presentation. Today, we're going to discuss the vision hardware design rules so you can optimize the cost price for your industrial machine vision camera project. But first, I will introduce myself. My name is Gespar van Allemt and I'm the managing director of Get Cameras. Our mission at Get Cameras is that we would like to contribute to the development of technology. Thanks to our smart business model, we make the use of a machine vision camera affordable for you. We offer our industrial camera for a fair price in our online store that you can visit at get-cameras.com. This is the typical setup of an industrial camera. So you have the lens, you have the camera with the image sensor, the interface, and you have the software development kit so that you can control the camera. If we look at the cost drivers, we can see that the main cost drivers are the image sensor and the lens. But during this presentation, we will discuss all the separate cost drivers in your application. Let's discuss the industrial camera SDK. SDK stands for Software Development Kit. Each manufacturer provides a software development kit with their camera. However, this software development kit will only work with the cameras of that specific manufacturer. So you cannot switch between different camera brands when you have implemented their SDK. That is called a vendor lock. To overcome this problem, there is a standard. It's called USB 3 Vision and Kick E Vision. Most industrial cameras are compliant with these standards. However, to control the camera using an SDK, you need to have an SDK that is USB 3 Vision or Kick E Vision compliant. Therefore, commercial SDKs are available, but these cost mostly between 150 up to 500 euros. These days, there is also an open source SDK available. It's called Harvester. It's open source, so it means it's free of charge. It's easy to switch between different camera manufacturers, but there's only a limited programming language available. The, the open source SDK Harvester, for example, only supports the programming language Python. So if we summarize, the most easiest way is to use the SDK of the manufacturer, but then you have a vendor lock, but it's free of charge. If you program in Python, you can consider the harvester as an option. And in all other cases, you have to pay a license fee to control the camera, but it's easier to switch between camera manufacturers. Next step is industrial camera interface. This is how you connect the camera with the computer. So there are different interfaces available. Uh, you have USB 2, you have USB 3, Kick E, 5 Kick E, 10 Kick E. These days, most common use is USB 3 and Kick E. If you look at the differences between USB 3 and Kick E, you can see that USB 3 has a bandwidth that's four times the bandwidth of Kick E. So you can achieve much higher frame rates using USB 3. However, the cable length of USB 3 is limited to 4.6 meters, while for Kick E, you can go up to 100 meters. If you connect the camera to the PC, USB 3 is very easy to connect. It's just one cable, it supplies the power and data all over one cable. If you want to have just one cable to your Kick E camera, then you need to use a power over Ethernet switch or power over Ethernet inserter. So that means that you need extra hardware to get the power also on the same cable as your data cable. In both cases, there's no frame grabber required and the cable costs are low. The CPU usage, so how much CPU time is used to acquire the images is low for USB 3. Kick E, however, needs a little bit more CPU usage. Both interfaces are really good accepted by customers. And if you look at which interface is the best for multiple cameras, 
The USB 3 is excellent for that because it has a huge bandwidth. And Gig E is also good for that, but only when frame rates are low. So then we also have new technologies, for example, 5 Gig E. 5 Gig E is five times the speed of Gig E. However, this technology is much more expensive. And today we're going to discuss about to make the most affordable solution. So if you summarize it, then USB 3 is the best option, unless you have multiple cameras at low frame rate, because then Gig E is cheaper, or you have long cable length, so USB 3 is not an option, and you have to select Gig E. Now we come to the most important part, the highest cost driver of your project, and that's the image sensor. Mainly the cost price is driven by the fact if you need a global or rolling shutter camera. So if your object is moving, you always need a global shutter. While if the object is standing still, you need a rolling shutter camera. On the right hand side, you can see the difference. So if you look at the images uh, of the fan, the images on the right hand side are made by a rolling shutter camera. And as you can see, the blades have a different shape because there is a time difference between the first line and the last line of the image. So normally this time difference is between 50 milliseconds. Because there is a time difference, when you have, for example, um, applications where the light is changing during those 50 milliseconds, you will also see bars. So that's what you see in the image below the rolling shutter fan. That's why we said when you have movement, it's better to go for a global shutter. So the fan on the left hand side is a global shutter. All pixels open at the same time. So you really have a snapshot and you don't have any geometric distortion. You also have no problems with light changes. One other, one other rule of thumb is that we say, um, if you need high frame rates, up to 60 FPS, rolling shutter is possible. But if you need much higher, you have to go for a global shutter. Global shutter sensors can achieve frame rates up to more than 1000 frames per second. So how does that impact actually your price? So on the right hand side, we see now a table for a camera plus a lens. So if you look at the resolution, you can see that if you have a 1.3 megapixel camera and you look at the price, then global shutter is just cheaper than rolling shutter. So then you can just go for a global shutter and you pay around 250 euros. But as soon as you make an increase in resolution, so for example, up to three megapixel, you can see that the global shutter gets much more expensive. It's around 450 euros for a complete setup, while a rolling shutter is almost half the price, 260 euros. If you increase further to five megapixel, global shutter will also increase in price, but the rolling shutter stays the same. And the higher the resolution, so for example, 12 megapixel, global shutter is very expensive. It's uh, 1550 euros, while a rolling shutter stays at 400 euros. And with a rolling shot, you can even have a 20 megapixel camera and that just costs 800 euros, including the lens. So when you select the image sensor, you can see that's really important to determine, do I need a global shutter or is a rolling shutter acceptable? And if you have a global shutter, do I really need a high resolution or is a lower resolution also acceptable? So rule of thumb, if the resolution is 1.3 megapixel or lower, you can always select a global shutter, but above, if rolling shutter is possible, then go for the rolling shutter because you can reduce the cost heavily. The lens is the second highest cost driver. Therefore, it's very important to select the correct lens for your application. Before you can select the lens, you have to determine which image sensor you are using. The smaller the image sensor, the cheaper the lens can be. Just to give you some examples, 
a one divided by 1.8 inch lens that also fits of course on a one third inch sensor or a one quarter inch sensor then the price is between 90 and 100 euros if you get a slightly larger image sensor for example two third inch the price is between 120 and 180 euros and if you get even a more larger sensor like 1.1 inch or one inch then prices go between 300 and 400 euros therefore if you want to reduce the cost, it's essential that you select a camera with a small image sensor. If your project goes into high volume, you may also consider M12 lenses. M12 lenses are used for, if they are available for machine vision applications, and they cost between 40 and 60 euros. They only support image sensors up to two third inch. There are also M12 security lenses available in the market. They are much cheaper. They cost between 10 and 15 euros. The main difference between the machine vision M12 lens and an M12 security lens is the geometric distortion and the product life cycle. So looking at the geometric distortion, machine vision M12 lenses have very less distortion, even almost zero, while security lenses often have a lot of distortion. Also, the product life cycle is a big difference. Machine vision M12 lenses are always available for many years, while security lenses, they go end of life most of the time between two and three years. The other bad side of M12 lenses is that you have a fixed iris, so you cannot control the iris of the lens. If you need iris control, then you always need a C-mount lens. Some other rules to reduce the cost is, for example, if you're looking at a round or a square object. And if you do this and you, for example, have a one inch image sensor, you can actually just use a two to an inch lens. This has to do with the fact that your object is round or square and you don't need the outsides of your image. So when you use a two third inch lens on a one inch sensor, you will see image shading. But because your object is round or square, this does not affect your vision algorithm. Another option can be that in some cases, you can use a five megapixel lens on a 12 megapixel camera. This can sometimes be acceptable. However, the image will not be as sharp as you would have used a 12 megapixel lens, but it can reduce the cost. And in some applications, that's just acceptable. So the design rules for cost optimizations are actually, if you select the SDK, then we would advise you to take one from a manufacturer that's supports many operating systems, many hardware platforms, and many programming languages. So that in the future, if you're gonna make a new development, you have an SDK that you can use again also for different platforms. And of course, the manufacturer should have a lot of different image sensors and interfaces available so that you always can select the right camera for your application. If your cable length, so the length between the camera and the PC is less than 4.6 meters, we advise a USB 3 camera. If cable length is longer, you can go for gig E. And if you need a much higher bandwidth, then you can go for 5 gig E, but prices for 5 gig E are much higher. If your camera resolution is 1.3 megapixel or lower, you can go for a global shutter camera. If it's 1.6 megapixel or higher, then we would advise a rolling shutter camera if that's possible in your application. And if you have high volume projects, you may consider M12 lenses to reduce the cost of the lens. Matching the field of view size with the image sensor and the lens can also reduce the cost of the lens.
So I want to thank you for your attention. And here are our contact details. If you have any questions about the presentation or you need any advice or support, please send us an email at cs at get-cameras.com or just visit our website get-cameras.com and we are glad to help you further. Thank you.